cut buses. That's the word from the members of the Berkshire County Legislative Delegation. They say there's no need for them in a plan looking at the possibility of passenger trains from this region to Boston. I asked State Representatives John Barrett and William Smitty Pignatelli why they rallied together to make this ask. I think we're doing a generational evaluation of uh, east-west rail transportation. Um, for the last couple of years, the Senate had only been talking about uh, Boston to Springfield. Uh, we've been talking for a couple of years now about bringing it to the Berkshires as well. Um, I've long envisioned a corridor of uh, Albany, New York. Berkshire, Springfield, Worcester, Boston. I call it West East instead of East West because I figure if we start in the West, we'll assure to be getting done. But it wasn't until Mayor, uh, Representative Barrett uh, showed up at the legislature that said, hey, we have to include the Berkshires. That was not in the original study coming out of the Senate. It was Springfield to Boston. We insisted we had to be part of this conversation and uh, Representative Barrett really stepped up in a big way. Uh, if we're gonna do a generational evaluation of the next wave of transportation, Else could include all of the Commonwealth, not just treat the Berkshires uh, very differently than everybody else. And, but in terms of eliminating buses, the, the way that, that Mass uh, Department of Transportation is studying this right now for those keeping tracks at ho tra track at home, six options are being considered, a variety of mix, match, how we're going to do this west to east, as you call it, representative. And right now, three have bus options from Pittsfield to Springfield and three don't. Why cutting out the buses altogether? Well, I think that, uh, is that what they do in Boston? Is that what they do in, want to do in Springfield and to the outer areas there of the, uh, the other part of Western Massachusetts and the Florida? Meaning, you know, instead of taking the T back home, you take a bus? That's correct. I mean, and um, you know, we don't have that kind of transportation. It's about time that uh, we got into the 21st century out here. And I think the other thing that was aggravating to me, and, and when I first went into the legislature that first month and possibly the first meeting, was that they weren't talking about Western Mass. I know that the, the representative, uh, Chairman Pignatelli, had mentioned it, but they weren't hearing us. And, uh, and that's why I, I felt as though we should have to be adamant. We are in serious trouble in the, in the Berkshires as, as far as economic development go. We don't have the, the broadband service and they have in other parts of the state. We don't have effective competition. We don't have a good rail line coming to us. That is the only way we're going to be able to not only grow our area, but possibly say, save it down the road. Probably not in my time or your time even, and, um, uh, but it's going to happen. And, so, and I think the other railroad uh, service that we... Uh, what I would like to see um, looked at very seriously is the one that uh, Senator Comerford and, uh, um, put forth in the Senate in a study to look at coming up uh, basically the northern corridor, Fitchburg through Fitchburg and then on to Boston, right through to uh, coming the other way, um, back to North Adams and into Vermont. That was looked at several years ago. That's available. That's a possibility that can be looked at in the interim before a high-speed rail is eventually developed, linking the west to the east and the east to the west. Uh, on this, the matter of the Berkshire delegation coming together, putting this ask to the Department of Transportation, you did it at the end of July. Have you heard anything back from DOT? No, and I personally am not uh, that uh, alarmed about that at this point. I think this is the start of a very long process. Um, I think, But we made it very clear at that very first meeting that anything to do with uh, buses only to the Berkshires should be off the table. I mean, we're building a, a network of transportation for the next 100 years. Uh, I won't be here long enough to see it either, but for the next generation and generations to come, just don't say we're only going to have buses in the Berkshires. We have to look at all options, and I think if that's the only path uh, out of three of those choices, I think it's being short-sighted on Mass DOT's part. What about on the other side? Have you heard from bus companies who say, hey, hey, we don't like this very much? Well, sure, sure we've heard of that, and I've worked very closely with the Peter Pan on doing some things. We're talking about a, the shuttle down to Wasaic, uh, New York, or all the way to, to Grand Central in New York City. So I think buses currently in this current form are, are the mode of transportation. It could be enhanced, but we're looking at a generational investment, a generational opportunity to evaluate for the next 100 years to only say it's buses, I think is short-sighted. In terms of looking at this broadly, and as you say again, west to east, rail service, down to Boston, it seems to, th I think, to many people who look at it from the outside, a no-brainer. Every major city has trains as an option for commuting. And, but when you look at what MBTA can handle, would they be able to add something else into their mix? Feels like you hear about the T breaking down every day. 
Well, that's why I say start in the west and go east, because it's the funnel effect into South Station. There's going to be a lot of more transportation, more trains going into South Station that maybe they can't accommodate. So start out here. Start with that Albany, Berkshire, Springfield corridor, and then as we get further going east, uh, they'll be better able to accommodate those kind of things. So the MBTA is a disaster, in my opinion. It has been for a long time. I think we need to take the bull by the horns and try to fix this thing once and for all. It's the largest city in New England, the city of Boston. It's the economic hub of New England, um, but they have a horrible transportation system. I've told the mayor, a former colleague of ours in the legislature, you want to have a world-class city, you have to have a world-class transportation system. Th Massachusetts has a deplorable uh, mass transit system, and that's what we have to try to address. And the other thing you have to do, you have to realize, too, that the taxpayers in, in western Massachusetts have been paying for the operation of the MBTA for years. We want to see some of that money shifted to the western part of the state. For example, a lot of people don't know that they get 16% of the sales tax, which is one penny uh, of that six and a quarter, goes to the operation of the MBTA. In Berkshire County alone, that's $33 million a year. What is it in Hamden County and other counties throughout the Commonwealth uh, that don't have access to the MBTA? Shouldn't we get a piece of the action basically out here? And I think that's what we're, we're saying with all of this. Do buses are included in this? Of course. People like to ride buses, and that should be a, 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 an option that they have and continue to have. But I can tell you right now, it's about time that Western Massachusetts stand up. Senator Lesser uh, opened the door to get it to Springfield, but let's, let's get it the rest of the way to a place called Berkshire County that's an hour and a half away from my community in North Adams. Or southwestern Vermont, depending on uh, yeah. where you are, where you fall in that debate. Uh, Representative Barrett, one of the things that you had lobbied for last session was more money for the MBTA, kind of fell flat. Why do you think that was a hard push? Well, what I lobbied for, not MB, for the MBTA, what I, what I basically did was propose legislation that said, can the state of Massachusetts start giving one-tenth of a penny of that one penny that they get on the sales tax dollar to all the region, regions of the, area, uh, of the state that do not have MBTA service? I mean, you know, that has about as much shot as uh, a snowball someplace else. And, uh, uh, but, uh, in Florida. In Florida. And, uh, uh, but, uh, but it just didn't fly. But I wanted to bring it to the attention to the rest of the reps because a lot of them didn't realize how much of the sales tax is from their area is going to the operation of the MBTA, which to me is not only a disaster, but it's really, it's been a haven for people to, to get jobs in the from the legislators for years. It's got to stop. At the beginning of our discussion, you both joked a bit about timetable on this, the length, how long it might take to get it done. The study we're talking about for West to East Rail is expected in 2020. I'm going to ask both of you to turn over your magic eight balls here and, and say, what do you think is the reality of this going from study to actuality? I think that's going to be the challenge. I mean, finding the money and the resources to do just that. Um, I've been working on that, uh, a possible interchange, a new interchange between exit two and three. I on thought that was going to, yeah, I, was, I thought that would be a six month study. Um, it's already a year and a half. So I'm not I, as optimistic about 2020 having that end result. But if it is, does happen, then how much money is it going to cost and how do we have to overcome some of the financial uh, hurdles and the environmental hurdles to get this thing actually, uh, you know, when the rubber meets the road, getting the tracks on the ground to do that. So I think it's a long time going, but I think if we're going to study it. 10 years, 15 years? Well, I threw out 20 years um, only because, uh, you know, how long did we discuss the, the, the Berkshire bypass um, in Berkshire County? That was 50, 60 years, and we still have no bypass. So I think studies are one thing. Actual implementation is another thing. It's going to take a long time, but the financial aspect of it is going to be the biggest nut to crack. I think what, what I found going into the legislature, I've never seen a state that loves to study everything. We have studied everything. <laughs> Lots of educational institutions yeah. here. Yes, and, and, it's, and it's just crazy. They, they've got to put together implementation um, plans. You know, not only do they do a study to see the feasibility of doing it, but determine how it's going to be implemented as part of that. They don't do that. They just study it put an implementation plan into place. They don't do it in the state of Massachusetts, and I think that's one of the reasons why we're in the mess we are today. And it's not uh, so much this generation of leaders. 
um, that have caused it, it's passed. And it's got to be looked at by, by those of us that are here now to try to get it going and try to uh, stir the pot so that it can be addressed, especially for the area of Western Massachusetts that we represent. We're part of the state. Like I say, Berkshire County dumps in $31 million a year for the MBTA, where after 20 years and age 44 or so, you can retire with a very nice 80% pension. And that's, and that's my fear, that, and that's why I keep calling it west to east. I really believe if we start in the west, it's going to get done. My biggest fear is that it'll be studied, they'll start building it, but it'll stop right here in Springfield, and we'll be isolated once again in the Berkshires.